What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin. And one of the most exciting things going on right now with the Boston Red Sox has been their ability to build up a minor league system. The minor league system for the Boston Red Sox has gotten much better over the last couple of years, and there are some really exciting prospects within it. And over the last couple of days, that excitement has only grown because over these last couple of days, MLB has released not only its top 10 positional prospects throughout Major League Baseball, so that would be stuff like top 10 first baseman, top 10 outfielder stuff like that but they also released their top 100 MLB prospects for 2023 and there are a lot of guys on that list for the Boston Red Sox to be excited about and we can also be excited about it as fans as well so what we're going to do in today's video is break down the Red Sox on that top 100 list we're going to talk about why they may have ended up in the position that they did and we're going to talk about what we can expect from these prospects in 2023 and why you should be excited about these top 100 Red Sox prospects but before we get into that do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new here we talk red Sox content almost every single day also make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me thank you all very much for clicking on this one let's get into it there were actually four players on the MLB's top 100 prospect list that came from the Red Sox system. Now, Baseball America also put out a top 100 prospect list, and they actually had five players from the Red Sox organization on that list. It was all the players that we are going to be talking about today, plus Masataka Yoshida. Now, in my personal opinion, I don't entirely consider Yoshida a prospect, mostly because he's already played professional baseball in Japan. He's coming over as sort of a rookie to Major League Baseball, but not a rookie to baseball in in general either way though we are going to be focusing on MLB's MLB pipelines top 100 prospect list and what we're going to do is we're going to go through each one of them one by one starting with the highest ranked prospect in the Red Sox farm system and this should come as no surprise to anyone this is a pretty obvious answer and that is Marcelo Meyer who came in as the ninth highest rated prospect in all of baseball for 2023 according to MLB.com now Marcelo Meyer actually fell down two places from last year's rank he was seventh last year. He's ninth this year. Why that happened, I could not tell you. It's not based on his performance, in my opinion. So it's either based on the fact that there was more talent coming in from the 2022 draft, or he had that wrist injury at the beginning of the year that maybe bumped him down a little bit. But either way, Marcelo Meyer still retains his top 10 prospect in Major League Baseball status. He was also the second highest ranked shortstop in all of baseball coming in right behind Anthony Volpe of the New York Yankees. And this is for good reason because Marcelo Meyer played for two different teams in 2022. He played for our low A affiliate and he played for our high A affiliate as well. At the low A level, Marcelo Meyer played in 66 games where he had an average of 286 with a 379 on base percentage and a 504 slug he also had a wrc plus at 149 which for those of you who do not know the average wrc plus is 100 making marcella meyer about 49 percent more productive at that level than the average player in low a ball and that was enough to grant marcella meyer a promotion to high a baseball where he finished the year playing in 25 games in those 25 games marcella meyer had a 265 average with a 379 on base percentage and a 449 nine slug he also had a wrc plus sitting a little bit lower than that wrc plus in low a ball but still above average at 127 he also had four home runs and 13 rbis in that 25 games so as you can see his stats did drop a little bit going from low a to high a ball but there could be a couple of reasons for that one obviously as you move up you're going to face more advanced pitching and while only having 25 games under his belt it's a much smaller sample size than what we saw in low a ball so he hadn't fully had time to completely adjust to high a pitching which is probably the reason for the lower stat line marcelo meyer is still super young only going into his year 20 at the season now in 2023 he's more than likely going to start the year in high a baseball our hope as fans and as an organization itself i'm sure is hoping that marcelo meyer plays well in high a ball again in 2023 and finishes the year at the double a level and really as you can tell by the moves so 
far this offseason by the Red Sox organization, they are holding Marcelo Meyer to a really high standard. And so far, he's really performing up to that level, coming in top 10 again on MLB rankings, having a really great year in 2022. And it's fair to assume that there are some great things coming for Marcelo Meyer in 2023. Really, what we want to watch in Marcelo Meyer is his ability to compete like he did at the low A level in high A to start the year and again, hopefully get to double A. Now, we probably won't see Marcelo Meyer even thinking about being promoted to the major league level until the end of 2024, maybe in those September call ups, maybe a little bit before that. And then we'll probably start to see Marcelo Meyer be an everyday sort of option for the Boston Red Sox coming in 2025. But again, that's a pretty far distance away going into the 2023 season. All we need to focus on is how well he performs at the single A level and see if he gets promoted at all to that double A level. And I have a feeling he will because the dude simply rakes. The second highest ranked prospect for the Boston Red Sox on the MLB's top 100 list was Tristan Casas, who is sitting at number 23, which is three spots up of where he was at in 2022. He was also ranked as the number one first base prospect in all of baseball, along with Nico Cavadas, who ended up in the top 10 for MLB first base prospects, but did not make the top 100 list. So that's just an interesting tidbit as well. But as for Tristan Costas, I think you guys all know how I feel about him at this point. I genuinely think he is superstar potential and the potential to be the one of the next great Red Sox players. But if you want the full breakdown as to why, there is a video on my channel. That link will be in the description. As for his 2022 performance, Tristan Costas spent most of the year in AAA, where he played in 72 games and had a 273 average with a 382 on base percentage and a 481 slug with a 127 WRC plus. So again, about 27 points above the average player at that triple A level. He also had 11 home runs and 38 RBIs. Just a really productive player at the triple A level. He did battle through an injury in 2022, but it was still enough to give him that promotion to the major league level, as you all know. Now at the major league level, Tristan Casas played in 27 games where he had a 197 average with a really impressive 358 on base percentage and a 408 slug. He also had a 120 WRC plus. So again, above average, despite that low batting average going into 2023, my opinion, and I think most people's opinions, Tristan Casas will be our starting everyday first baseman at that major league level, mostly because we don't have a ton of other great options, but because Tristan Casas really showed at the major league level, level that he can be patient at the plate he can attack the correct pitches and he can play some really great defense going into 2023 what I want to see from Tristan Casas is more of an average hitting I don't want him to be a home run or nothing type player I would love to see him mix in some doubles some singles some triples in that sort of variety of hits that he gets and I think he is fully capable of doing that so I'm expecting really big things from Tristan Casas at the major league level in 2023 after him coming in at the third highest spot was Sedane Rafaela, who was in the 86th spot on the MLB's top 100 list. This is an impressive 10 spots above where he was at last year to begin 2022. Unfortunately, though, he was not on the top 10 outfielders list for the MLB, something he was simply not happy about. But despite not being on that top 10 center field prospect list, Sedane had a really great 2022. He finished the year at the double A level with an average of two. 278, a 324 on base percentage, and a five, an even 500 slug. He also had a WRC plus at 120 and 12 home runs and 50 RBIs. On top of that too, Rafaela also won for the second year in a row, the best defensive player in the Red Sox system. It's an award given out by the team, but it's the second year in a row for him there. Going into 2023, it has not been confirmed yet, but with him being added to the 40 man roster, it seems like the logical move that he will start the year in triple a he does have some issues with chasing pitches at that double a level so my guess is the red sox are really going to want him to iron that out at the triple a level before they consider putting him on the big league roster but if sedane Rafaela, and i think he is fully capable of doing this does iron out that chase rate and really improves his approach at the triple a level i this dude could be a beast i think there is a possibility that we do see rafaela make his major league debut in 2023 but i don't 
think it'll be right away. I certainly don't think it'll be in the early part of the year, unless there is a major injury to a couple of our outfielders. I really see Sedane Rafaela, if he, again, if he can really iron out those chase rate issues being called up in September, possibly even coming into 2024. But again, if he can iron those out, this dude has a ton of potential. And at the very least, he is a great defender that if he does well in AAA, but can't fully figure out the chase rate stuff, could still be on the 2024 roster as a fifth outfielder field option. And finally, rounding out the Red Sox players in MLB's top 100 list is a newcomer, Miguel Blaze, who ended up as the 93rd highest ranked prospect on this list. This is his first year being included on the top 100 list, and it's for good reason, because Miguel Blaze had a fantastic year in the Red Sox system. He played in the Florida Complex League in 2022, where he played in 40 games. He had a 301 average, a 353 on base percentage, and a 542 slug. He also had a 141 WRC plus, so a well above average productive player at that Florida Complex League level. Miguel Blaze going into 2023 has a ton of potential. It's more than likely that he's going to start in low A ball, but Miguel Blaze has power. He hit 23 extra base hits. He's a really good fielder, and he's got some speed as well, where he stole 18 bags in 2022. He has legitimate potential to be a five tool athlete as he makes his way up up through the Red Sox system. Now, one thing to keep an eye on as he moves up, which he probably will in 2023, is his approach at the plate. He does have a bit of a longer swing and scouts are a little bit concerned with that fact of as he faces more advanced pitching, but so far that has not affected him too much at the minor league level. So something to keep your eye on, but this is a guy that I think could really shoot up the MLB's top 100 list, especially going into 2024, 2025. Keep an eye out on Miguel Blaze, and he is a guy that I am super excited to watch produce at a higher level because I truly think there is something special with Blaze and we could see him sort of shoot up through the Red Sox minor league system. But that's it. That's all the top four prospects that were in the MLB's top 100 prospect list. Having four prospects in that top 100 list is really fantastic. It puts us towards the top of the league when it comes to prospect potential and it's something to get really excited about as Red Sox fans. So let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think of these players? Do you think they were properly rated, overly rated, or you think some of these guys are underrated as well? Is there anyone in the Red Sox system right now that you would like to see on the MLB's top 100 list going into the end of 2023, possibly 2024? And let me know what you think in general of the state of the Red Sox farm system. Let me know all your thoughts on this list down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the Red Sea.